This is the knife we forged today, the Skagel knife. And uh, as you can see, there's still a lot of black carbon and stuff on there. Uh, this will all get ground down. And, and then we will heat treat this blade. So when this is finished, it'll look more like this. As you can see, this is also a file that's been forged down and then ground. And the edge still isn't on here, but uh, we will, uh, the last thing we would do is sharpen this edge. But we leave it dull so that we can put the handle on. As you can see, you're still working this, and we've already got all the bumps and everything out of this, and it's got a good profile. But I'm gonna show you how this comes apart. This is an antler, of course, that's been cut down to fit and drilled uh, to fit on the tang. And then this is a, a micarta spacer. And then you also have leather spacers, and they're numbered, number seven. And I'll put them in order so that when they go back on, there's number six, five, four, as you can see, three, two, and we have number one here. And they all fit in that order. And then the last one is this piece here that will also still be fit a little more as we put this together and finish. But I'm just showing that this is a non-finished blade. Um, and this is how you would fit the guard and all in the handle. I use a five minute epoxy. Some people use 30 minute epoxy when they put this handle on. And they would drill and put a pin on here to hold this on. So what you wanna do is, is stack all this up, get your dimension and find out where you're gonna drill your pin and then uh, go ahead and stack everything back up like so. In order. And this is still unfinished. I just did this for demos, for the demonstration, but it gives you an idea Now this will be pushed up tight with, with five minute on each piece, pushed up tight and then drilled and a pin will go through. It'll be a brass pin. I usually use a piece of rod from a, a welding rod for a pin. I haven't got that done yet. Of course, I have to do some more work here. I also want to heat treat this blade. I haven't finished heat treating, so that'll be the next step. And then the last thing you'll do is sharpen this edge. So this, will, this knife will be sent up to uh, Okmulgee's Guild in August and it will be auctioned off and I want to make a leather sheath for this also so the finished blade with a sheath should be a pretty good uh, item I hope. Had a lot of fun learning how to make these skagel knives. Piece of quarter inch uh, brass. Um, you're going to start filing an opening to fit of course to go over your taper. That's why that taper has to be consistent this way and this way because if you have any high spots when you go to slide that tight guard on it's only tight at the top where the highest, the thickest part is of the blade. All right, so um, when you're going up, if you hit a high spot, you're not going to go past that high spot. So you have to have that taper done properly. And if you can't get the high spots out on here, then you can grind them out on your grinder. So if you have to, but like I say, 10 minutes here is worth an hour and a half or more on a grinder. It takes a lot more to grind that metal down than it does to, while you're heating it and to work it. So you want to do all your forging the best you can here. But what you got is a uh, is a long piece of bar stock. Let's do it this way with it, and leave it long. Just a piece of brass, and go ahead and do all your stuff up here. Your file work. What you want to do is take a dimension. A lot of times your knife may be shaped like this at that at that area. So you'll take a uh, um, what do they call them? Not a micrometer, but a dial caliper. Take your dial caliper and measure the thickest part right here from here to here and write that dimension down whatever that dimension is and then you want to measure from here to here and write that dimension down on a piece of paper so you know not forget those you got those dimensions now to work to and you start filing well the first thing you want to do is open this hole up so you're leaving this long bar here so you got something to hold on to to put in your vise okay now you want to you want this hole right here to be this width so you got your dimension you find your drill bit that size or just a hundred thousandths less and then you would drill this hole. Okay, so now you've drilled a hole that's no wider than the area that, that you want to go. All right, now you do the same down here. You find this dimension, you figure it out, go find your drill bit, 
put it in your vi uh, vise, in your drill press, and drill this hole. And you don't want to go over. Notice how I went over the line on that? Now the thing is, you still got all this material in here. How are you going to get that out? Well, you, if, if it's big enough, you can drill another hole if you want to get that dimension. But if it's not big enough, but you still have metal there, you take you a, a hacksaw blade and grind the back off to where you still have teeth on one side and get it into this hole and put this thing in the vise, this whole square stock, and go ahead and, and, and cut this area out. It's soft metal, so it's easy to cut out. So now that drops out and you still got a radius here and a radius here, so you got something that looks like this. You know, that's the bottom of the blade. This is the top. A lot of times when you've got that taper coming down, you know, on your blade, you know, it's, it's sort of like this. This is the top of the blade and it's coming down like this in that area. So that's why it's narrower here because of all this tapering you've done. So now, the problem is a lot of times when you drill this hole, you may end up with something that looks like this. And this is the problem that I'm going to show you how to fix. If you drill this hole at a little bit of out of square when you're, or out of perpendicular when you're going through, it comes out the other side, you may have something that looks like this. And it's sticking out beyond the point that you want to be for the thickest part of your blade. So now when you put this guard on there, this is the whole guard, you know. When you slide this on to your tang, it's going to hit high spots, and then you're going to have a gap there. And when you look through the light, you're going to see a gap. So you want this to be tight right here on the on the blade side. Now on the back side, it doesn't matter. Where all your leather builds up, you can file that open. And now you actually want to leave it open in the back. And the reason is so you can put some uh, silver solder down in there, little slivers, and then and you'll actually solder this silver solder this guard onto the high carbon blade. So silver solder works good between brass and copper and high carbon. That's what he did too. Skagel would actually silver solder his blades. So now you got a gap here. How are you going to fix that? And you've got a gap here, let's say. So now you got a gap with light and a gap with light, and it looks pretty good over here. Or you can even have a gap on both sides. Say you built, you took a drill bit that was too thick. How are you going to fix it? Well, this is something that um, uh, Jim Batson taught in the class. You would take this messed up guard. And you have a gap here, gap here, gap here, gap here, or wherever. And you may even have filed too much and have a gap down the whole side of it. You know, say when you clean this out, this this has light showing all the way around here, like this. When you look through, you'll see light. How would you fix it? Well, he takes the back of the of the uh, guard where all the stuff is stacking up, and it's hidden back there where all your silver's going. And uh, he'll put a a kerf right here and one here. So he's actually sawing it and leaving a place so that when he hits this with a hammer, it's going to smash to fill that void where the where the saw kerf was at. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So looking from the side angle of a piece of brass with a hole in it, he had a kerf, and the kerf went like this. Because this side, you don't want that kerf to show. This is the side that's the blade. Okay? This is a side view. And then he has a kerf here. And it's right in the middle, the top and bottom edge here. He saw that kerf in there with that little uh, blade that we were talking about earlier. And um, then he takes it on the horn of his anvil, on his blade. So he's got the kerf. And let me see, is there, where is that blade? Here it is, right here. So say right here I got a gap. If I had a gap here and a gap here, you would take it and have that kerf on the back side, and it's soft put it right against the horn of the anvil and hit it over here. So you're actually beating this. Now remember this is still a big piece of bar stock. So you got plenty there. You're holding this thing, you got a bar over here or sticking off of this and you're taking it on here as it's all one long piece of bar and you're beating it down to fill that void and to close the gaps all the way around. So once you got this nice and tight on the face and it's open on the back because you want to bevel it, leave it big open and hole back here. As you can see when you take all this stuff off it got a pretty tight fit all the way around, so but the gap in the back is where you're going to lay little pieces of, of uh, silver solder. I've got some thin silver solder that you actually flatten out into slithers because a, a piece of silver solder is kind of like a piece of wire, so it's round, you know. You want to flatten it out and drop them little flat pieces down in here. Take a tweezer or whatever and push them down inside there 
and then put this in a vise and you heat the tang up. Once you heat the tang to the right temperature, don't heat the, the you know, don't heat the guard. You'll see the temperature go and all of a sudden it'll just flow. When that flows, immediately you'll look on this side and you'll see it come out the other side just a little. And if it comes and runs down your blade, don't worry about it. Just take something quickly and pick it off like a toothpick. Try to get that off your blade and you can polish that out later. But now you've silver soldered it on and it's on there forever. I mean, that silver solder is something else. This is a real tight fit and I can beat this off of here. Let's so there's see. really no reason to pin the, pin the guard to the blade? You don't have to. Not this kind of guard. Now, the guards that go up from the bottom yeah. and they leave a gap at the yeah. top, yeah. those usually get a pin because okay. you don't want it to ever yeah. move. Sometimes they have two pins in them. But this one here, this kind of guard, and that's what's neat about Skagel. He had his guard up all the way to the top and the bottom and he tapered the tang. That was the whole purpose to have this guard all the way around to protect your hand. And, and he, like I said, he, he always had an angle on it. And it was like you're thumbing, you know. It's like grabbing or thumbing on the side of the road. He, you know, this is what uh, Batson would talk about. And uh, it just felt comfortable in your hand when you're under a piece of skin and you're trying to skin a deer or something. So, and it kept you from sliding up onto the blade. So that was the purpose of the guard, of course. I can get this off. It's, it's wiggling. If not, we're going to beat it off there. But there's a leather mallet around here somewhere. You want to see box? Oh, it is. Back here. Oh, thank you. Oh. There you go. And leather mallet's good for that. It won't mar things up. But as you can see, I did leave a little kerf in the back. And I was going to close this up some, but I just decided not to. But this is the back side. It's not as pretty. You can see it's not as straight. And plus, when you when you have this, you can grind this flat on your sander and start shaping this guard. You want to bevel this. That's all done on the grinder. It's very easy to do. Uh, my belt sander is what I'm calling a grinder. It's a 2x72 variable speed. So you can bring the speed down with a rough grit and shape things like this. But this is after it's cut off of the bar, of course. But we've already filed and did all the file work while it was a bar. It's easy to hold and put in a vise. You can pass that around if you want. This is the one I did at the knife uh, class, and I used copper on this one. As you can see, that it, it was it was shaped more at, a, at an angle. It was thicker at the top, thinner at the bottom. Got a nice fit, and you can see the silver solder showing up on there, mm -hmm. right near the edge. Mm -hmm. On the back side, if you could take this one apart, you'd see a big gap in there where I had to beat this down because it had a gap in it. But that's a neat way to learn how to get a tight fit. If a knife maker looks at your knife, the first thing he's going to look at is see how tight you got that guard on there. So that's one of the first things they look at, then they look at the straightness, you know, and they want to see your taper and your grinding. I mean, they, a knife maker will really critique your stuff, believe me. <laughs> believe me, and I got a long way to go, so I don't pl claim to be the a pro or anything, because I have only done two of these knives in my life. And um, like I say, but I had to do this as a demonstration for the guild, so. But I'm, I'm learning little by little, and uh, everybody can do this if they want to. Uh, I use a, a five minute epoxy, but you can also use 30 minute epoxy when you glue this on if you like. But I just used a, uh, a drill press to drill the hole and uh, put it into a vise on the uh, drill press. Make sure it's standing vertically and just drill down to the depth that you need. And just keep drilling, drilling and working and, and cleaning it out. And then uh, fitting it, making sure that this fits. So you, every time you uh, you drill it, you want to fit it to make sure you get a good tight fit like this. So when it's completely done, you'll come back and uh, after this is all glued up and put your pin in, then you will come back and uh, and grind this down and file it and burnish the edges of the of the uh, leather and put your color on it and uh, then you're finished.